So my name is Remo and I work in Aeon. I run the Dublin TypeScript Meetup and I'm going to be talking about functional programming. Basically, it's an introduction to the vocabulary around it. And I don't know how many people here is familiar with object-oriented programming, if you can raise your hand. And what about functional programming? Cool. And how many people have tried to learn functional programming but found it difficult to understand, especially at the beginning? So hopefully this talk will solve the very basic concepts and then you can go and learn more yourself. Um, the problem of functional programming at the beginning is that it can be very scary, okay? Uh, especially when you start reading things like referential transparency or immutability or, or category theory or even worse things, okay? Um, but I don't know you, but I had this fear before. Uh, because when I started learning of your the programming, uh, words like polymorphism was very complicated and very hard to understand. So we have been there before, and we shouldn't be scared about functional programming. So I'm going to go through the very basic concepts. Uh, and the first one is pure functions. Uh, by the way, the way I, I found interest in functional programming was by learning React and Redux. And I think that's happening to a lot of people right now. Uh, you start with React and Redux, and you find a lot of these terms in the documentation and that kind of thing. Um, so a pure function is basically a function that when you call it with some arguments, like for example here, uh, we are adding two numbers. If you pass uh, five and five, it doesn't matter how many times you call that function with five and five, you will always get the same result, 10. So in that case, the function is pure. Uh, but in this case, for example, we're adding two numbers and a random number. So if we call it one time with five and five, and plus the random number, we will get one result. But if we call it again, we will get some different result. Uh, because of that, uh, it's not pure. There's also this other thing called side effects. So a side effect is basically a state mutation when we change some value somewhere. Uh, the problem is that sometimes uh, we pass something to the function, say, for example, an array, and we return a new array. Uh, but by mistake, we have changed the original array. If we have changed the original array, we have done a, a side effect state mutation. Uh, we bring us to immu immutability. So in a pure function, we should not mutate state, and we should try to uh, use immutable data structures. Uh, to do that, we can use a library like immutable yes. And also, in you will be able to uh, find this online later, but this is some methods that in JavaScript, uh, the array object has some methods that will change the array. For example, if you sort an array, it will change the array, uh, the original array. What I mean by that is, uh, in this example, we're finding the maximum in a number, uh, the maximum number in an array. So it's nine here, okay? Uh, and the way I'm doing that is sorting the array and then finding the last element. Uh, the problem by doing that is that by calling sort, I didn't think about it, but I have changed the original array. So after calling the function, you can say that you can see here that the A array has been sorted outside of the function. So I have done a state mutation, and because of that, this function is not pure. Uh, so in the other side, we can do it with pure, and I have done uh, and basically I have iterated through the array to uh, to avoid the state mutation. So we can see here that in this case, the final array and the original array are the same. So I have not uh, mutated the state, and my f this method is pure. Uh, before I move into this, why uh, pure functions are important is because you can predict the output of the function. So when you think, what is this function going to do? You actually can think about it, and you can actually guess what is going to happen. If there's random state mutations and random side effects, you're not going to be able to predict it. And because of that, it makes it hard to test and creates bugs and basically is a pain. Uh, so once you have pure functions, you can move to the next thing that is a functional uh, partial application. That is basically that when we call this function here, uh, I call it with two numbers, five and five, and I get 10. Uh, and I do it in one time. What I mean by this is I'm calling the function and I'm providing two arguments in one go, and I get the result. But in this other case here in the right uh, side, 
I'm calling first with five, and then later I will call with five. Uh, what that allows me to do is uh, we can uh, basically this function can add any two numbers. So the set that is an input of the function is the whole set of numbers. When we call the function with uh, one argument, the return is another function that takes the second argument. But the function remembers that the first ar argument is already five. That's why uh, the output is basically a function that is called add five to something. So in this case, we have reduced the options of input. We went from the whole set of numbers to five plus another number from the whole set of numbers. So it's like a more specific version of the original function. Uh, and then I can use the other function. So the nice thing about this is that you can call a function uh, and you can generate other functions from the original function. And this allows you to reuse code mostly. Um, another thing is when a function has two arguments, it's called binary. When it has one argument, it's uh, unary. And the number of arguments is called arity. So it's just vocabulary that you need to get used to. But addic functions are functions that takes a limited number of arguments. And then we go to carrying. So carrying, what it does for us um, is a function that takes a function and, for example, if we pass uh, these add four numbers to the query function that is here, in this case I'm using a library called Randa, uh, what it will do is it will take this function and uh, allow us to call it in four steps. Why four steps? Because that's the number of arguments we have. So what this helped me basically is I go back. Um, in this case, I change the function add into this one that returns another function, and I did it manually to be able to call it in two steps. Now, if this function has four arguments, I will have to do four returns of four functions. I don't want to write that kind of code when I have nested uh, returns of functions. So Corey do that, do that for us. We don't have to manually return the functions. Um, and then once we have uh, par uh, peer functions, if they are, if they are uh, unary functions, they are easy to compose. And compose is basically that you can combine two functions into one. So we have this function here that we pass f and g, and it will return uh, calling the we then later returns a function that takes some data. So when we call the, the function with the data, we can uh, it will call g with the data, and the return will be passed to f. And what we can do is, for example, here uh, we have string and capitalize, and I can compose those two functions into convert. And when I call it with this string, it will trim it, and it will capitalize the a. So again, uh, it allows me to create more functions from, from previous functions. And that's basically the core things that you need to know about functional programming. From there, you can move to very complex things. Sorry. <laughs> Here are some links to some books that I used to learn it. About Java, they are all JavaScript books, and then some libraries that is very functional programming libraries. Thanks. <laughs>